everyone and welcome to Christian Access. This broadcast can be seen on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock a.m. For Cablevision sub subscribers, that would be channel 70, and for Verizon subscribers, channel 36. Today, we are happy and elated to have with us um, a author and a motivational speaker, and she goes by the name of Sharice Stevenson. How you doing, Miss Stevenson? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Listen, I'm so happy that you came on our program, and I'm especially happy to have with us another author. Uh, God has really been blessing this show with people that have things going on yeah. and authors. And we're here to talk about your brand new book called Unnamed yes. and Unwanted. What am I here for? Yes. And this is what the book looks like. Yes. Thank the Lord. And today we're going to discuss this book. We're going to discuss okay. this book. Now, um, before we really get into it, where can we pick up this book if we want to get a copy of it? The book is on Amazon. Okay. And it's on Barnes and Noble. And it's also Kindle Ready. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, and um, there's... Um, a Facebook website, oh, okay. which is simply www.facebook mm -hmm. slash unnamed and unwanted, all one word. Okay, and okay? that's the title of the book. Yes. Okay, so you on can't Facebook. Can't miss it. Okay. All right. Great. You can't oh, miss it. Okay. Now I've, I've I've read maybe like about one or two excerpts from your book, but tell us a little bit about the book. First of all. First of all, let's start here. Let's start with this incredible cover. <laughs> Thank you. What is this cover about? Um, the cover of the book is mm -hmm. a birth certificate. Okay. Now, you, normally, you know, everybody have a birth certificate and their names are on it, the parents' names are on it, mm -hmm. date of birth, you know, the serial number, things of such. Yes. My birth certificate does not have my name on it. Mm. Um, yeah, it doesn't have my name on it, so let's start there. And um, there's a parent name on the birth certificate, but that's not the parent who raised me. Hmm. So that's how the cover, okay. <laughs> that's the story of the cover. Okay. All so right. it's a birth certificate. It's actually a replica of my actual birth certificate. Okay. Okay. All right. Now tell us about this. <laughs> Woo. Tell us about this title, <laughs> Unnamed and Unwanted. What am I here for? How did you come about the title? Um, I was told to dig deeper. That wasn't the actual first title. Okay. Um, but I was told to dig deeper, and it came to me in, like, in my sleep. God, mm -hmm. like God gave it to me when I was looking for research doing the, the book because I wanted the information to be accurate okay. to the best of my ability. And when I came across my birth certificate, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my name ain't on this. Mm. And it was like... And so and that's, that's how I felt um, unnamed and unwanted. Mm. And because I felt that way, I was questioning my purpose. Okay, so what am I here for? Right, right. You know, and mm -hmm. that's the title of, of the book. Mm, mm. But thank God for God, we have an answer to that. What am I here for? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, um, like I said, I've, I've, I've maybe read like one or two excerpts from, from your book, but the book looks like there's some some telling tales in here <laughs> about your life. Yes. Hmm. yes. So this is primarily based upon some of your experiences and some things that you have gone through. Yes. Okay. Yes. All it's, right. It's a true story. <laughs> hmm. It's it's a true story. It was about my upbringing, which was somewhat. Can I say dysfunctional? Hmm. Full of, yeah, yeah. It's full of secrets and things and things that happened. And mm -hmm. um, I felt targeted. Mm. And to this day, I won't know why, because those who have the answer are now deceased. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's, okay. it's definitely about me. All right. <laughs> so, so tell us a, a little bit about some of um, your experiences in relation to the book. Um, first of all, what, what, how did you decide to write this book, first of all? Okay, but the decision wasn't mine at all. 
Okay. <laughs> if it was left up to me, I would have never written that book. Because mm. I would never want anyone to know that portion of my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the book is an assignment. It's mm. how I look at it. Um, it came to me in... God dropped it in my spirit during um, Bible study at church. Oh, come on. And um, I heard nothing my bishop was teaching on that Wednesday night because mm -hmm. God was dealing with me literally with the book. Mm -hmm. He gave me the outline. He gave me the format. And strategically, only certain events is mm -hmm. in that book. Okay. So it's not a, it's not a family tale or bashing the family mm -hmm. or... It's not a woe is me, pity me type of book. Mm. It's it's a story of survival. Okay. It's definitely a story of survival. And that's the message of the book mm -hmm. that um, you can make it. Okay. Um, you asked about incidents in the book. The incidents, of, well, none was nice. Mm -hmm. But I want to bring out the hidden um, I don't want to say horror, but the hidden, I can't think of a word. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But um, the base of the story is dealing with verbal abuse. Okay. And that's where a lot of it stems from. Okay. Now, um, from some of the research that I've done, you know, I've heard and I've, I've, I've also read that verbal abuse can be just as bad as physical abuse? Um, speaking from experience, mm -hmm. it's worse than physical abuse mm. because verbal abuse deals with your mindset. Yes. It kills your self-esteem. Your self -esteem. It kills your drive. Mm -hmm. It kills your love for yourself. Mm. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's really, really something hard to conquer mm -hmm. and it's not something that can easily be done by yourself. Mm -hmm. If you get punched in the eye, you go get some ice and put it on your eye mm -hmm. and the marker go away and you okay. And yes. But you know, verbal abuse is more internal. Mm. And this is why I believe God led me to do this assignment mm -hmm. because no one discusses verbal abuse. Mm. We'll discuss physical abuse, we'll discuss domestic abuse. We'll discuss animal cruelty, yes, yes. police brutality, mm -hmm. but nobody's talking about verbal abuse. But mm -hmm. then some things get swept under the rug as a mental illness. Mm. And I believe, I just really feel in, in my spirit that a lot of that mental illness comes from verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. And because there's no outlet for that, mm -hmm. um, people are damaged. Mm -hmm. So they lash out and they act out and they just you know have these moments. Um, some people are off balance, but mo I think a lot of things emotionally, mm -hmm. and especially in the church realm, mm. um, I think a lot of people are damaged mm. from verbal abuse. Yes. So I want to shed light on that, um, not just for the church, mm -hmm. but mostly for the church. Okay, okay. Because, you know, there's um, some scarring that comes behind that, and, it, and, and, and not only... <clears throat> Oh, excuse me. You know, not only just in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense as well. Yes. You know, um, something can come across that um, um, where someone can say something that could be damaging and scarring. They may not think so right. because they're not really thinking about what they're saying. But when you bring that out to the other person, you can damage them and you can pretty much scar them. And I know it. Yes, yes. I've had some friends that have... Um, um, they have left churches, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and have also left relationships because of that, mm -hmm. you know. And I honestly believe that um, 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 if God is telling you to say something, God will tell you to say it with love, right. with admonishment, right. which means a friendly warning. You know, you have some that will rebuke, you know, but God has um, instructed us on ways of how to do that. Right. Um, also in this book, um, I don't want I, I, I don't want to just get to it, you know, right away. I want to save this for maybe towards the end of the program. It's a passage that I read in here. 
And um, what I want to do is uh, we're going to we're going to take a break mm -hmm. and then we're going to come back on the other side of that break. Okay. And then uh, what I want you to talk about is I want you to talk about maybe one or two um, of um, your experiences that you've had, um, something that um, you, you just had to put in the book and let people know about. Okay. So um, what we're going to do right now, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back on the other side. We're going to have some more discussion um, about the book, and um, we'll be right back. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Hello, everyone, and we're back, and we are here today with uh, um, evangelist Cherise Stevenson, and we're talking about her brand new book um, that's out called Unnamed and Unwanted. What are you here for? Um, this book can be found on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. Uh, we're going to put up uh, the website, some other places where it can be found. But um, we were just talking, we were just talking, um, just before um, the break about some of your experiences. Give us maybe one or two of your um, experiences that you've had, and then where I really want to go, I want to go into this passage. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll, I'll give you one. Um, my 16th birthday. Okay. Which is like, you know, ta-da. For mm. a female, mm -hmm. you know, mm. her, rites of, her rites of passage. Yeah, sweet so 16, to say. so to speak. Sweet yeah. 16, bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. You know, I get up, I get dressed. My dad does what he does, which is money and cassage. That was his assignment every year. Mm -hmm. I'm that kind of a brat. Yes, I am daddy's little girl. <laughs> yes, so um, he did his part and went on to work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, went to school with my friends, had a ball, had a blast. And, you know, it was a great day. Mm -hmm. You know, I got excused from classes. It was ball, you know. And I'm excited because I'm going to go home mm. and we're going to do some other stuff. Mm -hmm. And I get home and there was nothing. Whoa. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. On your sweet 16. On my 16, sweet 16. That's, man. like you just mentioned, yeah. that's a young girl's rite of passage yeah. there. There was nothing. Hmm. How did how, how how did you feel? I mean, I can I can only imagine, <laughs> but how did it make you feel? Honestly, I was, I was hurt. I was mm -hmm. disappointed, mm -hmm. and I went back out drinking with my friends. Mm, <laughs> wow. That was <laughs> wow. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Are there some other instances in this book that sure. are okay? All mm -hmm. right. Let's go to this passage right now. Sure. <laughs> um, here, you did a very interesting thing in this book where you mentioned lyrics from uh, Travis Green's CD. Yes. Um, and let me just read this. Sure. Um, All things are working for my good. He's intentional, never failing. Yes. I don't have to worry cause it's working for me. And those are lyrics, and you even put, you even give, gave the credit here Absolutely. to Travis Green. Absolutely. In this passage, it says, I opened this segment of story with strong positivity because I believe everything that has happened to me was intentional through the power of God, even situations that I may have caused on my own. Now, here's the part that really interested me. After my mother died, things became worse. I no longer cared about life. Once I lost my job, there was a lot of tension and eventually I was asked to leave. There really was no need for me anymore. My friend had gotten her life together, graduated college and landed an awesome job. Children were school aged plus with after school programs I was left with nothing to do 
or anyone to care for. However, I managed to stay in church and the new ministry that I was now a part of was predicated on prayer and praise. Tell us about that. Tell us about that time. Um, my mother had just died. Mm -hmm. um, what age were you when she had um, passed away? When my mother died, I was 28. Okay. 28. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about 28. Mm-hmm. And um, her death died with answers. Mm. And because she was the one with answers, it killed me because I now would never know. Oh, I know that feeling. Yes. So yes. It, it drained, it drained all of me. Mm -hmm. um, my whole demeanor went straight down. Mm. Um, I didn't want to do anything. And the definition of anything is anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, of course, you know, your job, they usually give you a couple of days off. Mm -hmm. And um, they told me to come back when I was ready. And I never went back. Mm. And so because of that incident, um, tension with my roommate. Mm -hmm. And um, she asked me to leave. Mm. And... Um, I didn't even put up a fight. There was no reason to argue. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, I just did what I had to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, God just, God was just always there. I, I dealt with the spirit of suicide mm. because um, that feeling of not being wanted mm -hmm. or not being needed mm -hmm. was heavy. It was very, very heavy. And um, because I didn't get the love that I felt I should have gotten from my mom, mm -hmm. I really didn't know how to love myself. So if I wasn't caring for you or somebody else, then mm -hmm. I didn't know what that was. Mm. So when I was asked to leave, it was like I had nothing to do. I had nobody to care for. Like mm -hmm. I had nothing. So, but then I was, like I said, I always managed to stay in church. Mm -hmm. But church was always the last resort. Like, God, if you don't answer, <laughs> if you don't come through and see about me, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do. Yes, yes, that, yes. That's just, you know, you know mm -hmm. we all say, we all been mm -hmm. there. And um, that was my life. Mm. That was my life. Mm. I would go to bed waiting to die. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday come, be like, all right, I'm going to go to church and I'm going to give God one more chance because he's going to see, he got to do something. Yes, yes, And yes. lo and behold, through the word, and through prayer, and through praise, God was God. Mm. And he always made a way, which is why I opened made up that segment of Passions with those lyrics from Travis Green's songs that it was intentional. It was mm -hmm. purpose that I went that route. So um, I can let somebody else know that mm -hmm. You can make it. Mm -hmm. That's not the end. That's not how your story ends. Yes, yes. You know, yes. you really have to. You really have to build your relationship with God mm. and trust Him, no matter what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you this. Now, early on in this segment, you mentioned that uh, the passing of your mother. Mm -hmm. It was like it, it. It. It felt as though she left with answers, mm -hmm. but answers that you would never, mm -hmm. you know, receive. Mm -hmm. So is it possible that because of your faith, God gave you those answers? He led you to those answers because you stayed with him. He led me through answers by completing that assignment. Mm. I was damaged badly until I completed that book. Oh. Yeah, I had... It was the completion of the book that brought you... Yeah, peace. Mm. Yeah, now it's like, okay, now, now it is well mm -hmm. <laughs> with my mm -hmm. soul. Mm -hmm. Now it is. But it would plague me. It would plague me for years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The why, why, why you didn't love me, why you didn't want me, what was wrong with me, though, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But now I'm in a place in my relationship with God that he loves me, he wants me. Yes. And I'm I'm tickled pink about it now. <laughs> I am. I was like <laughs> tickled pink. I am. Like God loves me. God wants me. I'm I'm good with mm -hmm. that now. But mm -hmm. before I was like, how could you? How could you do that? Mm -hmm. And I was I felt like I was living a lie. Mm -hmm. 
you know, with church and with friends and mm -hmm. and people. But I don't know. Some people, I was told, some people don't survive or make it emotionally. Yes. Um, so people look at me like, wow. And I'm like, all I had was God. You know, mm -hmm. my dad had me in church at an early age um, for, you know, whatever it was. Something mm -hmm. something stuck with me. Yes. So yes. I was clinging on to something about God. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. know much, but I knew about God. Mm -hmm. God's supposed to do something. He's supposed to be God. And he's supposed to do something. So that's what he's, that's what I'm waiting on. And yes, <laughs> yes, yes. You know, and he came through. He came. He comes through all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All, and that's my message. That's my message. You can make it. Yes, yes. You can make it. Yes. Build your build your relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Not the church. Mm -hmm. Not the people. Not the organization. Mm -hmm. Not the title. Mm -hmm. With God. Yes, yes. And 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 you know, <laughs> you know, like um, the word of God also lets us know. That mm -hmm. the church is, it's not the building. Right. We are the church. Right. You know, we are the right. church. And what God does, he does it within us right. and for us. And then when on top of that, when he blesses us, he blesses us so that we're able to go and bless someone else. Absolutely. Just like with this book. Absolutely. Just like God bless you to be able to do this. Yes. So that someone would read a yes. little bit about what you've been through, your life story, so that this right here could go out and bless somebody else. Yes. That if you made it yes. out of the things that you've been through, you've gone through, somebody else out there can, you know, can yes. make it. So um, what I want to do, I don't really do this uh, that often in this segment, but what I want you to do is take, say, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And I want you to speak to a young lady out there that might be going through something. And I want you to look in your camera Okay. And just give them 30 seconds. Encourage somebody. Um, Viral America, I'm sitting here to let you know that the worst is not as bad as it is as long as you have Jesus Christ in your life. Yes. Amen. Um, I was interviewed before, and, this, and I said this before, and I'll say it again. Even if you never get to the building or the temple, Get your hands on the Bible, mm. for the Bible is the word of God, and God is the word. Read. Read what God says about you, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you are the apple of his eye, that you are more than a conqueror, Amen. that Amen. you can do all things through Christ, Christ. who strengthens you. Um, that, that's, my, that's my message from this book. I didn't even think how much to make it. There's a portion in the book where I talk about suicide and I tried it and I'm sitting here today because I didn't, I didn't want to go on. I didn't know what to do, but I'm standing here as a testimony that if God wakes you up each and every morning mm. with his mercy, mm. there's a purpose for you and your life in this world as long as you have him with you. And that is my message and that is my encouragement. I want you to learn to love yourself. Yes that you are better than, you are beautiful, you are strong, you are intelligent, you are wonderful, you are lovable, and you are wanted. Amen, so we're going to end with that. <laughs> we're going to end with that. Once again, the book that we uh, reviewed and discussed today is called um, Unnamed and Unwanted. What or what am I here for by Cherise Stevenson? And we're going to put up the information uh, where this book, uh, where you can obtain this book from. It's a great read. I'm telling you, it's really a great read. So um, we just want to thank everyone for tuning in today here on Christian Access. Once again, this program can be seen on Wednesday mornings at 7 o'clock a.m., channel 36 on Verizon and channel 70 on Cablevision. So thank you so much for tuning in here on Christian Access. Be well, God bless, and remember, I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. Okay. Yeah, Hello everyone, this is uh, Elder Ricky Bethune, and um, we're just doing a quick little uh, promo because um, they're getting things set up here um, at the studio at Lehman College for BronxNet, and um, this uh, quick little promo, I just wanna let everybody know pretty much what Christian Access is all about. Um, I know some of you watch the programs and some of you have it. On, and, and I also realize that some of you are probably trying to figure out well, what this is all about. What we're trying to do 
um, with our program is we're trying to be an encouragement to a, to a set of people who I like to call the creators, okay? And these are people who um, do all sorts of things, everything from textile, which is crochet and knit. Uh, they design shirts and suits and hats and you know different things of that nature to the music, to the musicians um, of our community. We have a lot of incredible um, gospel writers, singers, producers. Um, one of the young men um, who's here um, uh, while I'm doing this promo is um, Elder Riley Sproul. Can you come in for a second? Just want you to take a look at Riley. Some of y'all know Riley Sproul. This is a very talented young man. Um, he is the CEO of uh, Zay Goody Productions. Um, he's also the, um, the head man for Holy Sound. He has a CD out, um, he has a single, and he has some more stuff coming out. God has also blessed this young man to also preach, deliver God's word. So these are kind of like the, the type of people that we're hooking ourselves up with, networking. And there are also so many other people, uh, God's people, in various churches, a lot of times we don't get the credit, or uh, uh, not just the the, uh, the credit, but we don't get the encouragement that we need to continue to go forward, so that our gifts, our God-given gifts, would be fostered, so that we would be able to move forward. Now, not only are we here to encourage the creatives, but we're also here to encourage God's people, okay, to continue to bring forth the Word of God, the unadulterated Word of God. So listen, um, I hope this promo wasn't too long. So um, just stay tuned for Christian Access. I lift you up, Lord. You are a 